The small hip section at the end of the L leg of the building is now constructed over the TG4 girder. Using the demonstrated procedures shown in the hip section of the DVD. Where the roof line of a building changes direction, that is at 90 degrees as shown in red, it will be necessary to form a valley to allow rainwater to run freely into the valley from the roof in both directions created by the change of roof line, as the green and blue arrows indicate. Page 24 of Volume 2 Handbook shows the correct method for installing the valley trusses and the necessary valley runners for the bracing of the truss rafters under the valley trusses. The V3 and V4 valley trusses shown on the layout drawing in orange are placed on top of the rafters of trusses sloping towards the TG4 girder. As indicated by the green arrow on the video, the blue arrows show the change in direction of the roof slope. The V3 and V4 valley trusses are creating this new slope. To set up the valley, we measure the distance from the apex of the TG4 hip to the wall plate at right angles to the wall plate. The tape measure is now moved to a line parallel to the apex to the wall plate line. The dimension of from apex to wall plate is now marked on the rafter of the HG1 hip truss. We fix a nail into the top cord at the point marked on the HG1 hip. Another nail is now fixed at the apex of the TG4 hip and a fish line drawn across the two nails. We have now established the apex line for the valley trusses. The apex of each valley truss is lined up with the fish line to establish a level for the valley trusses. We check the dimension between the valley trusses and the TG4 girder to ensure that they do not exceed the allowable 760 maximum truss centers. Now temporarily brace the valley trusses. The valley trusses are skew nailed into the rafter of the supporting trusses and plumbed. The centre line of the valley is indicated in yellow on the layout drawing to show the valley position. A temporary 38 by 38 batten shown in yellow on the video is nailed along a line formed by the intersection of the extreme rafter ends of V3 and V4 valley trusses down to the 90 degree corner at the wall plate. This will establish the center of the valley, the temporary yellow line. Where the valley trusses are too short to bear on a truss rafter at the heels, a 38 by 114 grade 5 member is cut to fit accurately between the rafters supporting the valley truss. This member is placed directly under the valley truss along its length and nailed into the rafters and the valley truss in order to create a secure timber barrier for the valley truss. Establish the final width of the valley gutter to be installed, say 300 millimeters. From the temporary center line, the yellow line, measure and mark a point 150 millimeters which is half the width of the valley, onto the rafters on either side of the center line at the top and bottom points of the valley and draw a chalk line along both lengths. Nail a 38 by 38 batten from the apex of the valley to the rafter ends along both chalk lines. The temporary yellow batten is now removed.